You have this source of carbon that's in the forest. You have this um, need for carbon that's in agriculture. The fuels need to be treated through some kind of mechanical management of you know, taking out smaller trees, leaving the more resilient large trees. Oftentimes this material is piled up in the forest and, and then burned. That carbon that's, that was locked in that material is now released back to the atmosphere. We have this carbon residue problem, right? We got to get it out of the forest so the homes and the people and the infrastructure that's up there isn't damaged on the next forest fire. Right? So that's the problem, right? So what are we going to do? Are we going to just pile it and just let it sit there? Are we going to pile it and burn it? For the last century or so, last 100 years, we've been suppressing fires all over the Western United States. And so what we're left with is this breeding ground for insects and disease, and then also wildfires. 20 of the state's largest wildfires recorded in the state's history happened since 2001. The top three largest all occurred in one year in 2020. In order to reduce fire risk, we need to get a lot of this material out of there. The material that doesn't have much value or traditional value often gets left on site and it gets piled up and then when the conditions are right, they'll they'll light it on fire. So the material that's in these piles, you know, has it has some value to it. While we might not make a home out of it or lumber out of it, it's filled with carbon. Half of this is carbon. Instead of letting it burn in a slash pile, what if we were able to do something with that waste? What if we could turn something like this into compost? That carbon is still here, it's just in a new form. Well, if we can compost it, then why not? That then becomes the same as manure compost, right? As plants grow, they take carbon out of the air and put it into their shoots and their roots. And so they sequester atmospheric carbon in the plant itself. And then that carbon can move from the leaves to the roots, to the microbes, into the soil, where it can stay for decades to millennia, depending on the form of the carbon. We are exporting carbon when we harvest, right? We need to replace that carbon somehow in order to keep the soil in health. You have to be mindful of your carbon. Compost, actually, when you place it on the ground, is building organic matter in your soil. It's providing the microorganisms that will grow and thrive for years to come. It's a long-term investment. It increases soil health. Able to farm compost is, you know, primarily kitchen and food scraps from the La Plata County area and carbon, which is sourced from wildfire mitigation. So not only are we diverting what would have been a waste from the landfill, reducing methane, we're actually helping to support wildfire mitigation. And when that compost goes back on the ground, we're helping to sequester carbon, pull that carbon into the earth and grow local food. If you can geographically unify those things so that they're close to each other, it really makes a lot of economic and ecological sense to move that carbon from the forest to the farm. One of the problems we have is we have a lot of land and a lot of trees. This was a real fire danger. The trees, obviously, they absorb all the carbon from the air, which is a great thing, but when it comes to fires and everything moving through and they burn, it'll end up back in the air. So what we are trying to do is restore it back to what it was before and take some of the carbon out and actually bring it down to the agricultural side and turn it into compost and put it back into the soil instead of going back up into the air again. I have been really happy working with the people that are doing the logging here. They have been absolutely awesome to work with, been really happy with them. One of the main goals is to help create a, a resilient landscape that can have a, a healthy functioning ecosystem that provides great habitat for wildlife, can provide grazing for farmers, and can provide a, a beautiful spot for these landowners to live in. In a year, it's gonna be all green with the grass and the, the healthy plants. It's gonna be wonderful. The things that are hard to monetize are the things uh, that we all think about. Improvement in water holding capacity for agricultural soils, nutrient cycling of nitrogen, of those macronutrients that the plants need. Those are things that um, are really hard to monetize. So diverting forest residuals out of the forest and transporting it down to the Colorado Front Range to be processed into a finished compost, putting the soil amendment back into Colorado soils to help support Colorado agriculture, we're gonna save water and we're gonna provide them the microbiology to continue to develop and grow that soil. Residuals out of the Colorado forest can help provide that benefit. It's part of the tool, it's the carbon source.